Chiefs play on his own game. Done drill, Sergeant! Go! Why did you put that weapon together so quickly, Go? You tell me to, drill, Sergeant. Jesus H. Christ! This is a new company record. If it wouldn't be a waste of such a fine enlisted men, I'd recommend you for OCS, Private Gump. You are going to be a general someday, Gump. Now, this is simple your weapon and continue. What's up, guys? So you know what one of the great things about being a military veteran is? I'm allowed to have opinions about the military. So I'm just using that as a bit of a, of a disclaimer in case... I mean, obviously you don't have to agree with what I'm saying and... In fact, you know, in about, you know, two years, I might not agree with what I'm saying at all. But, you know, I just like to air out my opinion sometimes, so... Now, I want to start off with my own self-quote from uh, a post I made on Facebook like a couple months ago. It was about, uh, a lot of people might have heard about this. I was actually stationed on the USS Shiloh, and uh, about a couple years after I left, there was a person stationed there. I forget what his rate was, but his last name was Mims. Here's his picture right here. Uh, he's he's become kind of infamous because he actually, uh, they thought he was lost at sea, but he was actually hiding on board. And they believe what uh, caused it, what led to it, may have potentially been... Either, you know, a schizophrenic breakdown or, you know, maybe bipolar disorder. They're not really entirely sure, in fact, I, but I'm, I'm also not privy to this information. But that's what I'm referring to in this quote. Because there was an article that pretty much told his entire story, and it really made me happy to see that. Uh, because mental illness has always existed in the military, but it's oftentimes treated in a way that's not really healthy. So here's my quote. Great to see articles like this in circulation. I was definitely one of those that struggled through most of my time on ships. Made it through nine years in the Navy, then found out I had issues that should have precluded me from being in the military in the first place. I do agree that military life will always be tough, but it always interested me how negatively people responded when people started showing signs of legitimate issues, even after they got kicked out. Many mental illnesses don't present themselves until you're at least in your early 20s, and the average age of enlistment is 19 years old. You know what triggers most mental illness? Stress. What is one of the most stressful jobs in the world? The military. So does it make sense to treat somebody that is displaying signs of a latent mental illness as weak when it starts to manifest? Granted, that might have something to do with the fact that 18% of military leaders meet the criteria for narcissistic personality disorder. And it's even been stated outright that people with cluster B personality disorders tend to do best in a military setting, largely in part due to the fact that the military often promotes traits associated with narcissism. One of these is a lack of empathy, which can oftentimes lead to negative labeling of people that should be getting help. Now, obviously, this, this video is about autism in the Navy, but I also, or my experiences with having undiagnosed autism spectrum disorder in the military, but you know, I might as well talk about mental illness in general since I'm on the subject. But one major thing that I learned in the military is that people are willing to accept bad behavior as long as they can understand it. A little fun fact is people oftentimes misunderstand what, pe what they say whenever people with autism have issues with empathy because the type of empathy that people with autism have trouble with is cognitive empathy, such as knowing how to put themselves in another person's shoes or how to navigate social situations. However, some, including me, are actually very good at effective. I, in fact, I developed empathy at a very young age. So it's quite the misnomer to say to pretty much view people with Asperger's or, you know, other autism spectrum disorders as, you know, little sociopaths because sociopaths tend to be very high in cognitive empathy. That's why they're able to manipulate people and be charming. They lack effective empathy. And the reason I say all of this is because my experience in the military is that people with sociopathic or, nar or narcissistic traits oftentimes are accepted and even promoted because even though they display bad behaviors, people understand them. But because people with autism are weird and awkward, people just tend not to like them. My issue with being in the military is I was never quite able to get the social aspects down. I could do the work, I could get my uniform looking good, I could get my boots shiny, I could score high on my tests, but I just could not conquer 
Most of the social aspects that come contingent with being in the military or any other system that follows a business structure. Therefore, I was at and would have always been at a major disadvantage. So throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to be focusing on various perspectives that I developed from being autistic in the Navy. Instead of delving deep into how being autistic in the Navy is a unique experience, because I feel that would be less valuable in a subject where I have so many opinions and, you know, personal experiences that I can throw around. Now, personally, I think I joined the military for much different reasons than a lot of people. A lot of people join, you know, just to, you know, have a job, you know, travel the world, get free college. I just wanted the military to make me normal. That was the only thing I was concerned about when I first came in. That and getting a degree because I had screwed up at college. So, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's the main reason. Who knows? But, you know, that's just my personal perspective. I always liked the idea of being a military veteran, like, you know, Cloud Strike. Or, you know, the lead singer of my favorite band, Tool, Maynard James Keenan. Now, originally, I was going to come in to the, to the Navy at, under the nuclear power program and was going to be a uh, the nuclear version of... That sounds kind of funny. The electron of a electronics technician, but I ended up just becoming a conventional electronics technician, which was kind of frustrating because I passed the nuclear test by memorizing all of the equations on the study sheet they gave me. But you know, maybe because I had a, I, I passed algebra two in high school with a D. Maybe that's part of the reason why they didn't accept me into the program. Who knows? Now, what some people might be thinking is, aren't people with Aspergers and high functioning autism all you know math savants? No. Oh, that is a stereotype. I actually am good at math for the most part, but I have to be taught in a very specific way, which I'll talk about in my next video about autism. But here's two clues. I don't see anything. Where? Right there! verbal and logical thinker and nonverbal learning disorder. Now my issue started all the way from boot camp. The Freedom Hall and do a, a PFA, physical fitness assessment. They have to do as many push-ups, as many sit-ups as they can in two minutes and run a mile and a half in 12 minutes and 15 seconds. When I was in boot camp, I was willing to do the bare minimum because a pass is a pass in boot camp. But for some reason, people thought if they did better, they would like get treated better afterwards, but I kind of knew that wasn't true. That was illogical to me. And there was one situation where I said that they, people were giving me crap about my sheets being kind of unkempt, but I'm like, they're within standards, who cares? And I remember uh, this was the first time I kind of realized I was at odds with the people around me. This guy told me, thanks for screwing us over, Nitsa. And I couldn't understand what everyone's issue was. Granted, he turned out to be right because they did want them to be a little bit better than bare minimum, but I didn't understand that at the time. And that's something that always confused me with being in the military or, you know, being in the Navy, is you were expected to take pride in everything that you do. This is no time for foolish pride. I always found that very exhausting. I like taking pride in only a couple things. And the thing is, at the enlisted level, pretty much everything you do is a very mechanical process, which does indicate that you are a hard worker, which is a trait that I, I personally consider the most important trait a person can have. But in many situations, it feels the, like the equivalent of moving a lake with a teaspoon. Now you'd think that being a technician and working with a bunch of nerds would have been perfect for me being autistic, but I was never quite nerdy in the right way. For one, I was never a big gamer in high school. Therefore, I couldn't relate to people on that level. And like I said, I was interested in being a Navy veteran, not active duty. In the same vein, I was interested in being a person with a background in electronics, like, you know, Trent Reznor or Aphex Twin, but not an actual technician. For this reason, I never really liked my job. Granted, I never had any issues working, at least after I got through my early 20s hump and stopped being so lazy. You're lazy. But I was never going to pretend to like my job. I liked being seen as reliable, but I was never going to, you know, feign any passion about being about the arbitrary fact that I was a, you know, electronics technician. Almost every single technical job in the Navy at least has, you know, pretty much the same ASVAB line score requirements. So it never made sense to me like the in-group, you know, bickering between people about who the smartest group of technicians are since So, this is engineering, huh? I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Engineering, where the noble semi-skilled laborers execute the vision of those who think and dream. 
Hello, Oompa Loompas of science. The requirements for being a technician in the Navy aren't really that high to begin with. And most technical jobs don't take that much brain power. They just take a lot of reading. <laughs> A lot of reading and taking of, you know, signals in, in machines, which is extremely boring. Now back to the video game thing. I was labeled as kind of a video game nerd throughout my entire time on ships in the Navy. At least until people got to know me. And this was very frustrating to me. Because until recently, I've started getting back into video games, you know, to help out with my anxiety. But until recently, I was never that big of a gamer apart from when I was a kid. And this was always frustrating because people would assign attributes to, to me without actually getting to know me. And this was very hard for me because like I've said in a previous video, I've never easily fit into stereotypes. So I was constantly fighting against people's perceptions for no reason. There was no reason for people to take these shortcuts with understanding me. They could have just talked to me. And this caused me to force myself into many social situations that I was, wasn't quite comfortable with. But I learned to blend in over time as being normal by fighting against who I really was in the first place. Being that I also lie on, you know, routines in the majority of my life, this led me to drinking at specific bars every single night. So I felt like I was being social, even though I was socializing in one of the most unnatural ways possible. I was surrounding myself with several strangers every night instead of developing strong social connections with people. Now my biggest issues in the Navy, at least as far as the job goes, is I never cared about the status quo. I rarely express emotions, which can, can cause people to think I just don't care about things when it's just hard for me to exp I don't express myself openly normal, normally. And when I do express myself, it's usually, or at least when I was younger, it was usually what I, I anticipated that people expected me to say, not what I actually felt, because I didn't understand my own emotions. And the fact that I don't do well in teams. And this is large part due to the fact that it's hard for me to filter out sensory information, so working in teams is really exhausting for me. I always did really well whenever I worked by myself and had a certain routine. My goal, you know, I felt accomplished if... By the end of the day, I didn't talk to anybody over the course of the day that I did not want to, and I was able to do what I wanted to after working hours, such as study for my exams or, you know, read. And this all never quite worked out in the way I wanted it to because the Navy has this odd obsession with people working in teams. Never understood that. And this actually extended into going out drinking, which was really funny to me. Anytime the Navy comes out with a curfew, especially in Japan, one of the contingencies is that you have to have a, a Liberty Buddy whenever you're drinking, which is funny because that assumes that a group of, of drunk people is better than a single drunk person. And almost every single incident or major incident that's happened in Japan, in Asia actually, uh, with the military has involved large groups of drunk men. So why would they want you to go out with a group? I never understood that. Now getting praise didn't matter to me like it did to a lot of people. I just couldn't stand it when other people got praised while I was getting admonished. When I was doing quantifiably more work than they were, but my work was considered categorically insignificant. This was particularly notable at my final command, where people were standing watches while I was doing engravings, but the engravings were considered categorically less significant than standing a watch, even though it was the same amount of work. That was silly to me. A lot of people like considered me doing engravings equivalent to me just sitting on a chair and staring at the wall all day. If two people do the same amount of work, or a better way to say it is two different people take 30 minutes to do a project or, or fulfill an order. One involves working with tools, but one involves handing a piece of paper to a person of a higher rank. Why is that person considered to have done something more valuable than the person working with tools? That is very odd to me. That doesn't make any logical sense. Does that mean that visibility is equivalent to value and that I mean, it's very elitist and annoying to me and I don't like elitism? Now I was told multiple times that people often didn't think I was doing any work because I didn't broadcast what work I was doing. In other words, I would get the work done that was already expected of me, which could be a little or a lot depending on what day of the week or what week or what month it was. It changed, you know? That's the nature of work. But because I didn't talk about it afterwards, and people didn't see me do it, people assumed I just wasn't doing anything, even though the work that I was assigned that needed to be done was completed. And what I came to appreciate over time is that people cannot appreciate work that they don't have to do. 
and for you know these narcissistic and sociopathic types that are that run rampant throughout the military unless you are taking well there's something called the maintenance requirement card it's part of the planned maintenance system which is the bane of everybody's existence in the navy especially on ships if you're not taking their maintenance requirement card away from them and doing their work for them they can't appreciate what work you're doing because they can't see a direct benefit to them me personally because a lot of times people would walk into my space and say uh say what would you say that you do for this command and i would tell them well i mind my own business i don't worry about what work you're doing so don't worry about what work i'm doing it always frustrated me you're expected to help out slow workers if i'm better at managing my time and getting my work done why should i help out a lazy person that's, that's silly. silly a lot of people ended up hating on me after i advanced I, I made uh e5 that's the rank I got out as. I got stuck at that rank, but I made it pretty fast. People hated on me because uh, I studied for the test on my free time because I managed my time wisely and had a ton of time to study. I didn't, you know, watch movies. I didn't, you know, sit around doing, you know, whatever. I just focused on the one thing I really wanted, which was to make E5, and I made it. Then people hated on me because I didn't make it off of a evaluation, which I can't control, especially me being autistic. I can't control if people like me or not. So I controlled the factor that I could, which was the test score. Now, a lot of this uh, plays into the incumbent favoritism that plays into any organization that involves people. People naturally play to their strengths. Mine was, you know, working on a specific solitary project for a long amount of time and other people's involved, you know, communicating. And that wasn't my strong suit. That's not so that's not what I focused on. The problem is that communications is oftentimes, a, you know, equivocated to leadership ability. And this is considered a cardinal trait of value in the Navy. You're always expected to desire to become a leader. I never cared about being a leader. And I don't I never understood why this was a bad thing. And I never even understood why it was considered a good attribute because it's rare to meet a leader in the Navy that is well developed and skillful. Oftentimes they're just aggressive and narcissistic. Therefore, it's easy for them to give people orders. In an environment where you're bound by a contract to do what people tell you to do, the ability to get people to do these things isn't that impressive. And it always confused me anyway, because if everybody is trying to lead people, then who is doing the work? This was a logical conundrum that always perplexed me. By the time you are a senior E4 or an E5, you're expected to start transitioning into a leadership role. You're literally praised for pushing your work onto junior people at this point. Now, obviously, that doesn't always happen. I know plenty of people that, you know, were, you know, you know, captains that were perfectly fine doing physical labor, but this wasn't a requirement. And oftentimes it'll look bad on the military leader if they are doing these types of jobs because they are expected to push it onto their junior people. But you know, E4 and below, at least in the Navy, accounts for 38% of the full force. And if they're expected to do all of the work, what is the rest of the, you know, 62% doing? I mean, I'm not saying that they aren't doing, I'm not saying that they're not doing work or, you know, they don't have roles, but it doesn't make sense to me. Why do you need that many leaders? <laughs> that's just silly to me. And that statistic is, it's more of a thought experiment, but that statistic is just so mind boggling to me. Now, I never took pride in my rate. Certain characteristics were ascribed to me because I was an ET, which made no logical sense to me. I was an ET, therefore I was expected to know everything about electronics. Even though I had, me and all of my friends had some of the worst technical training imaginable. I actually have a way of understanding technicians in the Navy. Nobody actually knows what they're doing because we were all inadequately trained. Therefore, those that are considered good technicians are actually just the most charismatic, which plays right back into the quality of communication. Therefore, the most technical savvy are the same ones that are considered the best potential leaders and are also considered the smartest, which may directly feed into the 18% of military leaders that fit the criteria for narcissistic personality disorder. And I mean, that's just, this video is going to be about as long as my video last week. So I'm going to finish it here. If uh, I made any anybody, any veterans angry, uh, please leave mean comments below. You can disagree with me. You can tell me I'm wrong. I might be wrong. I'm just giving my opinions and I'm a veteran. So I've been through everything. So I feel entitled to give my opinion. So as always, if you like my video, subscribe. If you like my music, buy it. And if you hate me, tell everybody out.
Thank you.